Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. What do you think of my new panel? What the heck? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now my little panel behind me here is a P2.5. It's 256 pixels wide by 128 tall, and it gives a total of 32,768 pixels. Now, as you saw from my little demonstration there, my network here was struggling to feed uh, the 32,000 pixels with enough data fast enough to get a nice, clean, crisp signal. And that's where Master Remote would come in with FPP. Now I have to admit, I have, uh, I have made it more difficult for it than it really needed to be. My Master Pi, which is sat in front of me right here, is on Wi-Fi. Uh, it's connected to an access point just in the roof over there. And the panel has another Raspberry Pi, and that too is connected to the same access point uh, via Wi-Fi. Now, had I simply put a, a piece of Cat5 between the two, or in Cat6, then the problem wouldn't have existed. The, the data flow would have been perfect. But because we're on Wi-Fi, it had a little hiccup every now and then, and you saw that in the li lines and streaks across the display. If I hit play again on my master, you can see lots of jittering and juddering on the panel as it's trying to get the data through. Now, with the sort of data that we're playing with on our shows, we have to bear in mind that we have no opportunities for buffering, no, no margins for error whatsoever. All the data for your pixels is real time and it has to get there at the right time, on time, every time, for your show to play nicely and be in sync. So in an ideal world, you'd cable everywhere. But sometimes that just isn't an option and Wi-Fi has to come into play. And that's the sort of place where the master remote setup in FPP can really prove useful. So what is it? Well, basically it's a case of telling your show player, your main show player, that it's a master. And then if you have remote PIs or BBBs um, that can run FPP, you can put all the sequences that they'll be looking after onto the remote devices first. And then when you press play on your master, it can tell your remote device to play simultaneously. And then it will maintain a steady feed to make sure that your remotes are keeping up to date, playing what they're supposed to be doing and keeping in time perfectly by sending a small number of check packets, um, of sync packets, if you like, um, to make sure that everything is working together. So we've got our rubbish set up at the moment that's coughing and spluttering and really not happy. Let's set up a master remote and make this work nicely for us. So looking at my master Pi here, if I go into my input output setup, channel outputs, we can see if I look at the E131 tab that I've got my matrix set up on here to, to send via E131. Now this is the worst case. Um, if you were to send via DDP, it would be a bit better, but really for our role here where we've got Wi-Fi, master remote is the optimal. So you can see I've got the Pi set up here to send uh, 98,304 channels. Uh, that's our 32,000 pixels times three, once for red, green, and blue. And it's set or 192 universes, and it's set to send the whole lot. So I'm gonna turn this off now, because we're gonna set it to go as a remote. There we go. Delete, delete. So we don't want anything um, related to 
the remote device to appear in this uh, E131 DDP outputs. If you had other devices connected to your show player, um, be it Falcons or Colps or whatever else, um, the Colps of course can run FPP themselves, so ideally they'd be set up as remotes. Um, but things like uh, Falcons or Genius controllers that don't run FPP, um, they will need to be left in here um, so the packet data goes out as normal to them. So I've turned off my output here and I'm now going to scroll down to the bottom and we see the FPP mode is player. Now for version 6 on, it will appear as a player, but we have to tell it to act as a, a master at the same time. Now, let's just make sure that both our pies can see each other. Uh, we've got a Pi 3B plus here as the master, and there's another Pi 3B plus in the back of the panel. So let's go to status control, multi-sync. And there we go, the two can see each other. Um, they're both happy, they've got good signal strength. Um, and these two are going to be good to set up as a master and remote. So I'm going to change my settings at the bottom of the multi-sync page here and tell it to send multi-sync packets. There we go. So now when we press play on this, uh, on this master, it is going to send sync packets out to, to the devices it knows about in order to, uh, to have them run at the same time. So I shall restart FPPD. There we go. Now, we have to configure uh, the far end as well, the remote. So I'm going to go in and do that right now. Now, this Pi is also set up as a player currently. Now, it's been receiving data, so we've got a whole load of data down here to, to wade through. Let me get to the bottom of that. There we go. And we can see the, the mode at the bottom is player. Now I want to change that on this one to be a remote. There we go. That's saved. And if I go to my status, status, you can see now that the front page of this Pi has changed um, it's not giving us the player options anymore. Um, we've just got multi-sync packet counts. And if I tick update live stats, there we go. So we can see that we have been getting data from the master. So that's a good sign. Now nothing's come in recently, but that's because we haven't asked it to do anything. Now, the other thing we need to make sure that's set up on the remote is that it's not set for any inputs. So we're not going to get any data coming in. So if I go to channel inputs, there we go. That's where my E131 was coming in. And we don't need that anymore. So I can set my inputs to zero. Disable and save and restart FPPD. Now the only outputs I'll have on this one is for the panel's output tab to show, tell it that there's data got to go out to the panel. And if I go to input output setup, channel outputs, you see there's nothing configured on the E131, but on the LED panels tab, there's my settings for my uh, for my matrix, uh, the panel. There we go, so back to the beginning. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these two windows side by side so that you can see uh, what happens on both of the, uh, the pies as we press go. Let's move this tab to a new window and dock it there. And there we go. So we've got the two side by side now. Uh, on the left, we've got the, the show player itself. And on the right, we've got the shed panel uh, behind me. So 
So I'm going to go to status, status. There we are. We have the player commands on the primary uh, shed pie. Uh, sorry, the primary show player. And the shed panel is sitting waiting for commands. So what I've done already is from Xlights, I used FPP Connect and I pushed out the sequences to both pies. So um, FP Tools, FPP Connect, found the sequence and I pushed it to both pies. Now I tend to, because of the size of SD cards these days and the size of the V2 um, FSEQ files, I tend to just push out V2s everywhere and then let the pies deal with it. You can, of course, uh, use V2 sparse if you wish, and it should work out, Xlight should work out what channels have got to go where and then make, make up the files appropriately. Um, that's beyond this video, and I'll talk about that in another one uh, later in the year. So the files are out there, and if we just go and have a quick look in the file manager, if I go to content setup file manager, on the master here, you can see that we've got one sequence called demo 0323. And if I do the same on the panel pie, I've got two on here because there was one other sequence that I was playing with before. But the demo 0323 FSEQ is there. Now for the master remote to work successfully, both devices or however many devices you've got, have all got to have a copy of the file with the same name. If you're using V2 sparse, then they might have different content, but the file name has to be the same. So let's go back to, to status status. So now if I hit play on my master, we should get an immediate response on the panel and it should be a lovely clean butterfly this time with no artifacts, no dodgy lines, pausing, stuttering or anything like that. And there it is, that's a lovely clean and crisp signal because it's playing directly uh, from the Pi. Uh, it's running the sequence that's stored on the Pi in the panel and all that's going across the network is tiny multi-sync packets just making sure that everything is in check. So to recap quickly, all I've done is I've gone, let me blow this up full size so you can see it. So if I go back to my master Pi, all I've done is I've set up multi-sync um, or master remote by going into status control and multi-sync. I made sure that both my players were there the shed panel is set as remote, and I could have set it as a remote from, from here. Um, I previously went into the uh, show player, uh, sorry, into the shed pie itself and changed it there. But I could have just checked this box over on the right hand side for the device in question and then used the actions tab to set it as a remote. And that would have done so. There we go, it's just restarting FPPD. There you go, it's done. So that's set it uh, via a single command. And if you've got multiple, then you could have done a whole lot of them on the right hand side in one go. I then went into settings and I told it to send multi sync packets. And it's set up initially to send via multicast. Now, if you find that you've got devices that are not behaving, they're not answering uh, or responding to the multicast packets um, quite the way that they should be, you can always check the tick box alongside the individual device. And that will force it to send what's called unicast packets. So instead of sending one packet that's distributed to all of the systems, it will send an individual one to everyone to make sure that they go. Um, that shouldn't be required, but it's an option if, if it's needed. So that was the uh, master side. And then on the shed panel side, on the, on the remote, 
I simply went down to the bottom and I changed it from player to remote. I then made sure that there were no inputs set up on this device. Make sure that the, the show player isn't sending any E131 or DDP uh, through to the remote as well. Uh, go into your input output setup, channel outputs, and just make sure that you haven't got an entry in there that relates to that. Uh, if you do, it can cause all sorts of trouble um, because your remote Pi is trying to process the E131 or DDP that's coming in, um, and it's trying to run as a remote, play the local sequence at the same time, and it all ends up in a bit of a bun fight and uh, in a bit of a hot, sticky mess. Now, a shorter one this week, but I hope that's given you an insight into Master Remote. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care, have fun. See you next time. Bye-bye.